Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 20 of Night Call, and you know who we're going to drive. It's pretty obvious, I fell in love with this guy. I want to be his personal chauffeur, I would just want to hear everything about his life. You slow down a bit, you've just been hit with a, with a migraine. No! No, I wanted to drive him! You crack your win window, icy Parisian air fills the cab. You need to rest. Oh, it's the woman from the future again. Oh no, it's us. Hmm, oops. Oh, we... Yeah, we haven't met us this time. Yeah, I look like shit, I know. No surprise considering all the crap I eat, right? Smirks, or maybe it's just a smile, you can't quite tell. Just got one thing to say. It won't take too long. You'll be able to get back to defending the weak and the poor right after. Maybe cleaning up your reputation and that pretty face of yours. You're not gonna get the job done. You close your eyes, hoping this mirage will vanish. You probably won't be able to help that whore. Maybe you'll finally realize she was just using you. I've heard this before. Can you do some? Can you be a little bit more useful this time? It's your problem. You always want to help people, but no one ever wants to help you. There's no. Pr it's the same word that I had troubles with the last time. There's no reciproc. Reciprocity. There's no reciprocity. Now I got it. It's all one way. That bitch is just like all the others. She's not a whore. She is, though. He ignores you. He raises his voice, not paying the least bit of attention. Although maybe I should have said it just to see what he says. She treats you like shit. She's threatening you. She's ready to drop you to avoid losing face. I don't get you, they already locked you up once, you want to go back in? I had no choice. His lawless sense chills down your spine, there's something vulgar about it. Seriously, man. You had no choice, whatever. Run, man. Take your taxi and run. My humble advice, but who am I to give advice anyway? You always had a choice, always. Not me, not then. You feel his gaze bear down on you. I don't know what you tell your passengers. Get the fuck out. He shrugs. You're a piece of shit and you know it. Making deals with traitors, sucking dick so you won't end up in jail. Man, you're the victim here. Be a victim. Use victimhood to your advantage. We all know this. Oh, oh thank God he's still there. I was a little bit disappointed. I just... I expected that there would be more, that he would tell me something different this chapter too. <sighs> now to onto something good. Hello, Jerome. Top secret mission in Saint Wen. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna drive you there. You recognize the passenger who bumps his forehead against the bodywork as he enters the cab. Oh, I like him so much. It's, it's a jinxed guy who never stops talking. How's it going? Couldn't be better. Good to see you again, by the way. Like I always say, the world's a pretty small place if you keep your eyes open. Well, maybe not all the time, huh? <laughs> His smile is so awesome. I've had trichases before, and believe me, it's anything but pleasant. No idea what that is. Oh, please explain. It's a pretty painful condition when your eyelashes grow inward towards your eye. Oh. Okay, thank you. You can't imagine the pus, the cornea dries out because of the pain and the swollen eyelids. He shrugs as if it were nothing. The doctors couldn't believe their eyes. Ah, please don't ever leave my taxi. He laughs. Where are you? Ah, I'm gonna laugh too. I don't care. Your passenger feels compelled to go on with his story. Oh, he takes on a voice with a thick Marseille accident. <laughs> Not accident, accent. Oops. A trichiasis at your age? That's unheard of. Apparently, it is unusual for teenagers. Let's just say, going into 8th grade wasn't easy. Especially since I was entering a new middle school that year. Imagine arriving at a new school. Ah, oh, the proverbial wickedness of kids. They sure were mean to me. Where are you going? <laughs> Your passenger reacts to your question like a starving man gobbling up a piece of bread. Of course, what was I thinking? He's recovered his former assurance. 
Did you know that Paris Russian community lives in Saint Ouen? Well, I didn't. You learn more every day. He gives you an address near Saint Ouen. Uh, sure, it's the right number this time. You're referring to the fire, right? Pretty impressive. A nervous laugh escapes him. I'm just not good with numbers, period. No accountant is perfect. You start the cab. Anyhow, I said Russians, but I think they're Ukrainians, actually. Or maybe Poles? I can never remember. His voice becomes noticeably quieter as if he were talking to himself. I, I've only been there once. To Russia, to Ukraine, to Poland? To Russia? Uh, no, to Saint Ouen. Your passenger seems surprised, you ask. In any case, the Slavs are the best in the business when it comes to hard drives and decoding. His English hurts your ears. <laughs> We're having a little computer trouble and father wants me to recover what are obviously some extremely sensitive files. He attempts a wink, you can't help thinking about the disease he mentioned earlier. <laughs> So, I reached out to some of my contacts and here I am on my way to hackering paradise. You mean hacking, right? Excuse me. I think it's called hacking. Oh really? I thought... The ride continues in silence, excluding your passenger's occasional mutterings from the back seat. Idiot. You're such an idiot, Jerome. You can't make out the rest. A few moments later you enter the Polish area? Dilapidated houses, a low building in bad repair, a working class neighborhood that has yet to be touched by the joys of gentrification. Two enormous SUVs are parked at the address your passenger had given you. You stop the cab. Listen, it won't take long. Would you mind waiting here for me? I can make it worth your while. He attempts another wink, then goes on before you've had the chance to answer. Oh, I think he's going to get into trouble again. Oh, Jerome, I know how to, too. With with money, I mean. <laughs> uh. Nothing more. Nothing sexual, that is. <laughs> oh, Jerome. I understood it the first time. <laughs> All of a sudden, a triumphant, a triumphant look comes over his face. I only mention it because I accidentally implied to my cleaning lady once that... His hand flutters in the air. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> no, I don't. His lips form a bizarre pout, the pride on his face vanishing into thin air. She thought that... He's sweating bullets now. That I actually wanted, but, but of course I didn't. I would never... Not on your life. On mine? I mean, she'd been with our family for over 50 years. So I... Uh, can count on you? You'll wait for me? You give your passenger a smile, it would make no sense to leave now. No, I definitely want to see how this ends. I'll wait for you. Anyway, I'm just dropping off the hard drive, then it's home we go. I mean home, I go. All alone, you're just dropping me off. Yeah, don't worry, Jerome, I won't make a move on you. Although, ugh, he's awesome. I like him. Go ahead, the meter's running. Your passenger extracts himself from the cab, clearly delighted, slamming the door behind him. You watch as he rings the doorbell, talks briefly to an old woman, then turns around and crosses the street. He goes into a nondescript house with an overgrown garden. The leaves in the gutter are black, they've been there a long time. I'm not gonna take a nap, I wanna watch him. You stretch out as best as you can and turn your eye to the street, the minutes go by slowly. The houses all seem unoccupied. The street lights are either off or broken. The two SUVs parked there were licensed in... Chechnya. You've never seen a Chechen license plate before. Oh, okay. I think I know which country they mean. I didn't. I've never heard it in English before. Suddenly, a scream pierces the night. Your passenger is making a dash for it. Oh, I knew it. Oh, Jerome, what have you done? Did you imply sexual stuff to the other guys too? He opens the door and hurls himself onto the back seat. Uh, everything okay? Great, thanks. But I might suggest. You notice he's sweating profusely. We get out of here, like right away. You obey and start the car immediately. You keep your eye on the rearview mirror, but nobody seems to be chasing you. Your passenger's giving you a round of applause. 
Good show, just like Ayrton Senna. He raises a hand as if to chase that thought away. Or Gilles Villeneuve. He gives his head a shake, obviously spooked. Or Ronnie Peterson. Anyhow, why the heck am I talking about Formula One drivers? Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, whatever. Everything okay? Your passenger leans in towards you. What do you mean? I don't know, it looked like you were being chased. Chased? No, not at all. A moment's hesitation. It's just... You see, when I was leaving, I thought I heard, like, the sound of... He's reluctant to say it. Gunfire? Huh. No, no, not at all. I heard the sound of a who... The last word is garbled. The sound of what? It sounded like a hooting owl. Oh no. Mm. He's such a goofball. No, he's not. Ah, this is such a bizarre character. He's such a Yusuke. It sounded like a hooting owl. An owl? Yeah, and I panicked. I have an irrational fear of birds. Can you imagine? They don't even have arms. Oh, please don't let her leave me, Jerome. I want to listen to you all day. He's reduced you to silence with this one. That's why I beheaded Bruno. What? Your eyes fly open. <laughs> uh, beheaded? I mean, come on, it was only Mother Stock's hunt. Oh my god, he killed a dog? You see, we were vacationing in Saint Malo and there was this pelican perched on the balcony rail and I got scared. So I closed the sliding glass door, except I didn't notice that Bruno was barking at it, his head just barely sticking out. You're all pumped up from the getaway drive, you can barely contain a fit of ill-timed laughter. Oh my god, he beheaded the dog with the sliding door. Ah, oh, Jerome. You bite your cheek. <laughs> the vet said he died instantly. And that it was much more common than we thought. <laughs> Very much more common. I think Mother's still mad at me. It was the third dog she'd lost that year. Oh no, what happened to the other two? I'm too scared to ask. He raises a warning finger at you. No, they weren't all my fault. Okay. But I do have to say, dachshunds are a lot less resistant than they seem. <laughs> so, she only gets big dogs now. Bouvier is Newfoundlands. <laughs> Oh god. A Labrador, but he's just obese. It's diabetic, actually, but nobody knew at first. Luckily for you, you make it to your passenger street. No! Don't leave! Home sweet home. Is it this time you're home for real? Though actually, it's my parents' house. You pull up to the sidewalk. Thanks again, you were amazing. Oh no, you were amazing, Jerome. He pays the fare. Like Roland Ratzenberger in his Simtech S941. I have no idea who that was, but thank you, Jerome. He stops short, a smile spreads slowly across over his face. I don't know why I know all this stuff about Formula One. Pretty weird. The stuff that goes on inside the brain. He opens the door, half stumbling as he climbs out, then disappears. He notices the newspaper in the backseat. Your last passenger must have left it behind, or the one before. You grab it and put it away. Could come in handy. You start the cab. Oh, Jerome. He's awesome. I think he's my favorite character now. I think I'm gonna go to the gas station. We all know these guys. So. I will wait until Jerome needs me again. I, I want to be Jerome's private driver now. Okay. Then let's talk to the clerk. Nice, okay. And now we're gonna leave and see who we can drive. We don't know him as well, I think. Antoine Mercador, too cold to walk home. Okay.
Yeah, that would be a long way to walk. The passenger getting in your cab smells like grandpa. Stale smoke, a bit of sweat, an ounce of aftershave. The kind that makes your eyes sting. He gets settled, gives you his address, and off you go. You know how older folks function. They want to talk. Small talk, the weather, the election. But this guy, something keeps him from saying anything. It's like he has a secret and doesn't dare open his mouth for fear he'll spill his guts. Been keeping up with the killer case? He raises his head, gives you a weak smile. The Sandman, that it? That name. Only a journalist could come up with something like that. It's like they're plumb out of new ideas to peddle their rags. Terrible, terrible story. I was a concierge for over 45 years, you know. I've heard stuff about the story. He looks lost in thought. He starts to pontificate. He tells you some rumors he heard from former colleagues, but there's nothing you don't know already. After speaking for quite a while, he ends up with a long sigh. It makes me sad, you know. The world has become such a violent, terrible place. He nods, sadly. I mean, I can't complain. I'm retired. I live a quiet little life. I have my little rituals now. I go to the library to read the paper. I say hi to my colleagues. My former colleagues, that is. And I finish each day with a little glass of wine in a bistro next to my old building. And when I've had too much to drink, I treat myself to a taxi ride. Nice life. Big grin. Exactly, a nice life. And he sits up straight in the back seat like he just woke up. And I also play the lottery, of course. The nice old man is giving off a warm, pleasant aura. Same numbers every week for the last 30 years. You watch your passenger's face in the rearview mirror. Good humored, kind, you take a liking to him. Hey, imagine you win 100 million euros, what would you do with it? If I won 100 million euros. You think it over for a second, for starters, you could pay back your debts and your mortgage. Then there's Ade and the kids. Jackie, maybe, though she'd probably refuse. She would, so would Ade. The old man in the backseat clears his throat politely, a sign he's waiting for your answer. I shared with my loved ones. Your loved ones? Nice idea, but with 100 million you'd still have enough left to do whatever you want. Go crazy, indulge yourself. But why do that all alone? What's the point in spending so much money? You smile. What about you? You all but turn around to look at your passenger. What would you do with 100 million euros? For 30 seconds he says nothing. His eyes dash back and forth between the road, your face and the rearview mirror and his hands. You're not far from your destination. I already won the lottery. Oh! How much? 434 million euros. <laughs> wow! Yeah, you can definitely treat yourself to a taxi ride, but you can also treat yourself to give me a kind tip. What did you do with it? I gave it all away. All of it? All of it. They wired me the money and I gave it all away. To charities here and in Portugal, where I'm from, I gifted some my son about 50,000 euros, no more. And here's my building. You pull over as soon as you can. Are you fucking kidding me? Why just 50,000? You didn't keep any of it? No, what would I do with it? It would only cause problems. I'm 74 years old, young man. My wife died years ago. I don't have any family left other than my son who... He hesitates. You see, my son is a nice boy. He went to a good school and works hard, but... But he decided to work in finance. He doesn't need any more money. He pays his fare, you're unable to say anything. And also, I worked for decades for the upper class in the 16th arrondissement. They're all stockholders. Yes, that's it. They have stock portfolios. They don't need to work. I didn't want to spend my money to be like them, nor to make them richer. Never ever. All those limousine liberals, those old reactionaries. A look of disgust crosses his face. I saw things. Children thrown out of their homes, old people left to rot. 
Those people have almost everything, but it's the almost that drives them mad, that consumes them. No, no. I gave it all to hospitals, schools, charities. He sighs like he just finished a good meal. The moral of the story, young man. Meet your needs. No more, no less. You're totally nuts. You're incredible. Yeah. Realistic. <laughs> I'm realistic. And old. And falling apart. But realistic. He pats you on the shoulder. And of course, this will be our little secret, right? His question hangs in the air as he gets out of the cab. You watch him. He walks into a crumbling building in a bad neighborhood in East Paris. It makes you want to laugh and scream. Instead, you turn the key in the ignition. He did tip generously. Thank you, Mr. Multimillionaire. Oh. Hmm. So here's what I was thinking. Now we have the opportunity to drive Annabelle. But if it's sure that we will meet the uh, time travelers, what if we didn't get anything, a special interaction with Annabelle because we always drove her to the airport before. She already drew, she always drove, she always left before and not after our encounter with the future people. I'm just gonna leave Annabelle out for now. Maybe she will turn up later as well. I'm just gonna drive Miriam again. I don't know. Maybe she can, maybe she'll give us a different story this time as well. Okay, so two times we have answered of course and she knew that we didn't remember her so no so now i'm going to say no sorry and maybe she will explain further okay i had a problem with one of my guy friends and you you got involved oh what a nice guy we've been you have no idea what she's talking about but smile at her nonetheless uh, it's not at all the same situation anyway these are new clients her son is totally weird. The word weird hangs suspended in the air for a few seconds. Did we have the son already? What do you mean weird? He makes me feel really uncomfortable. He is disturbing. Oh, a new story, yes. It's like I'm babysitting a future serial killer. Oh. That must be so awkward. You stare at her. Serial killer. Yeah, yes. She freezes. Promise not to laugh. You nod, she starts to talk. This evening, I was watching TV with the volume way down. Suddenly, I hear something ring in the kitchen. I get up off the couch and smell the super pungent stink of plastic. She wrinkles her nose like the stench had followed her all the way into the cab. I open the door, smoke comes out, it's black, thick. And there, in the microwave, I find, she sighs, a toy, a cartoon action figure. It was all melted on a plate, but you could still make out its shape and color. The kid did it? She lo slowly nods. Who else? So I go look in his bedroom. He's right there, lying still, eyes closed. He's asleep. She freezes. Or at least pretending to be. But it had to be him. She's shaking. Her expression begins to reflect the fallout from her surprise, her fear. Shit. It wasn't the first time? N no, not at all. Sometimes he sets traps just outside the bathroom. Traps. She nods. When I come out, there are tacks on the floor. You know, thumb tacks. What? Oh my god. What child is that? She closes her eyes. The memory of the pain comes back to her, settles in. Did she really step on one of it? Oh my god. Or once. I don't know how he did it, but I found a huge hairball in my coffee. She sinks into the back seat. Like the nasty kind you pull out of shower pipes, you know. 
You can easily picture that kind of hairball. I thought I was going to throw up. Most of the time it's just his looks or words he mumbles. I read him a story and every time I turn the page he's like... She imitates what appears to be the boy's voice. Is the bunny going to die? Is he going to kill the turtle? What did it feel like when you... you... She stops her imitation, shaking with disgust. Uh, crush a turtle with your foot? She shakes her head. Kids just don't talk like that. What are you going to do? Stop going. Pretend I'm not available. Hope the next babysitter gets better treatment. She lowers her eyes. I knew the job was just too perfect. The parents were charming. They bought me dinner when we met the first time. They... She stares at you. They know their son is different. She shuts her eyes. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to say that, but... You're not far from your destination. But he's not normal. There's something twisted about him. Something wicked. You know, I've been babysitting since I was 13. This is the first time I've seen anything like this. Kids are all good. Some are difficult, temperamental, violent even. But they're not... Rotten. She turns her head away when you pull up to her place. A minute goes by, you avoid her gaze, she avoids yours. She pays and just before opening the door says, You have kids? You lie. And no. Have you ever seen that kind of behavior? That kind of evil? I'm gonna tell the truth. Your story reminds me of my big brother. There was something strange about him. Something dark? You hesitate a second. Perhaps. I never really knew how to put words to it. What became of him? I killed him. He died. She lowers his eye she lowers her eyes. I'm so sorry, I, I shouldn't have I Don't worry about it, it's in the past. The last little lie lingers on the tip of your tongue. Thank you. You're sorry to have brought it up. Your throat is tied, your eyes burn. Her smile hangs in the air. One minute later, passengers in the lobby of her building. Uh, I probably should have told her that she should talk to the parents. You almost forgot about her as your thoughts were so focused on your brother. Something tickles you. A breeze, maybe? You start driving so you don't have to think about it. I should have told I should have told her that she should talk to the parents, but I don't know. I hope that she would get this idea on her own. Okay, so we have Carlo and we have the cursing lady who I don't really like, so I'm just going to read the paper. No new clues, but okay, who are we going to drive next? I kind of would be interested to see how the D&D &D players story would continue or if it does but i don't want to this was such a long ride then when we played the round of dungeons and dragons so although maybe something happens if we don't agree to play with them maybe they talk about something else <laughs> no sorry you can see the disappointment on your passengers faces i understand it's too bad, because I swear it would be fun. We've been playing for four years and... Their eyes land on you at the same time. Come on, please, it would be so cool. There's like not even an hour of game left. A half hour tops, Xenofax and his honor guard are already in bad shape. The bastard ran out of his palace to gather strength. We were this close to killing him and he managed to escape. So? Sorry, it's... No. <laughs> Both passengers fall back into their seats. Oh well. We'll wait till we get home. She shakes her head. Uh, with just us two? I mean, it'd be just you, actually. She shuts her eyes. Xenofax one. He sighs. Yeah. You keep driving with not so much as a peep coming from the back seat. The street goes by. The boy starts humming something. 
It sounds medieval, like something a jester or a troubadour might play. What song is that? It's the Ballad of the Last Elf Hunter. It's from our game. She pauses, then adds in a sad voice. We wrote it just for the game. Bravo. You like it? Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Thought it was a well-known song. The girl shakes her head. It was the same. It was the theme song for our campaign. We sang it each time we started to play. She looks down. It was fun. We really had some good times, didn't we? As you turn onto the Place de, de l'Etoile, your passenger points to one of the ritziest buildings in the neighborhood. Right here, please. The girl plays the fare with a black bank card. You rarely see cards like that, especially not in the hands of a teenager. With utmost delicacy, they exit the taxi, taking the game board with them. You watch them as they enter the building. You immediately notice the security cameras just above the door in the lobby, which is so well lit it can't be good for the environment. Okay. I felt bad to ditch them, but I don't want to play this whole thing again. Okay, so those are bunny ears, right? I have to see what those are about. Ah, shit, man. Your next passenger is holding a bow, which he inadvertently pokes in his eye while getting into the taxi. He leaps into the back seat and looks at you with a lost expression on his face. I'm supposed to be at the Gambetta bus station in less than 15 minutes. Your seatbelt. You run the first red light you come across. With a little luck, you'll get this kid to his bus. You see him moping behind you. Shit, was it really that hard to be on time, bro? You shit stain. You can't miss this bus. You just can't, man. Everything okay? Uh, yeah, okay. This might sound a little crazy, but what do you think of my Gravia outfit? Gravia? Yeah, it's a race and a game. The bow, the helmet, the armor, you know, all that shit. Um, it's a costume? No, I suppose it is a costume. He's having giant bunny ears. It's very nice. Nice? Yeah, okay, but do you think it's lit? No, I do not. I do not use those words. Yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> interesting? I don't want interesting. He sighs heavily and droops his head. Oh, shit, all this for a chick. I'm so into her, I even started playing her favorite game, Lost Legend 5, to make her like me, but... Oh, but I look like a moron. He looks at the time on the meter. You don't look like a moron. You're just cosplaying, that's cool. Have you ever done anything like this for a chick? Oh yeah, I definitely did some stupid stuff. Much stupider than dressing up. It's not dressing up, it's a cosplay. He turns his bow over. This cosplay is for a convention? Yeah, in Belgium. There'll be thousands of cosplayers. It's pretty legit. Will there be lots of... Graviers? Gravias. No, I don't think so. They're popular, but the costume is daring. You've got to flash your abs at everyone all weekend. <laughs> good luck with that. I'm sure it'll be fine. No, let's say good luck with that. Thanks. <laughs> he glances at the meter. Are we almost there? Right about now. You park in front of the bus station. Your passenger pays his fare and pockets his change. Hey, thanks. He gets out of the cab, his bow gets caught in the door and snaps back in his eye. <laughs> Jesus fucking, this shit's dangerous. A second later, he's running for his bus, his bow slung across his back. I don't know, if he's so uncomfortable in his costume, why is he already in it while taking the bus? In the middle of the night. Just thinking. Oh, and the night too! Yeah, we're gonna drive him as well. You wanna go to the convention as well or not? Or are you just on a, I don't know, on a different quest? 
Schilderich de Prahan. Oh, my good friend, I need thee to ride forth. The car door opens. Your passenger enters, wearing a rather heavy-looking suit of armor. The plate metal clanks as he settles in. The horns seem dangerously close to the roof. Uh, yeah, definitely. Where ghost thou, my lord? The knight recoils a little, perhaps in surprise. Ah, takest me not for thy superior, for I beef lord to none. Yeah, I am thy humble servant, just as thou art mine. I in, in sooth, since thou askest. Ride onward, my friend, to Notre Dame, the most noble of Catholic cathedrals. The jewel of the most magnificent city of Lutetia. Ah. Lutetia. Y yeah, we just gotta figure this out before we go. In sooth, it is called Paris by the common people. Paris, that city of steel and stone. Noble stone worn away by the ages, glorious steel tempered by fire, the entire world. Ah. The world looking in awe at its wondrous face, its monuments soaring to the heavens, singing praise to the mighty guardians of the citadel. He falls silent for a moment, then eventually leans in a little closer. Well then, I pray thee to the forecourt of Notre Dame de Paris. You nod and turn the key in the ignition. You start the cab at last. The vibration of the cab sets your passenger's armor jangling. From time to time, his sword makes a funny humming sound. The ride through Paris continues in silence. The city is just waking up. Delivery trucks, the first buses of the day, and half-asleep pedestrians fill the streets. You feel a yawn creeping up your spine. Stifle a yawn. Your muscles tighten to prevent your mouth from opening. Your eyes glaze over. The ride continues in silence. From time to time your passenger shifts positions and so does his plate metal. You are nearing the streets around Notre Dame now. The knight leans in towards you. Ah, the majestic towers appear of yonder. What a tremendous sight. Oh, the marvel of it. Just think, it took dozens, scores of years to build it. He looks out the windows as you stop the cab. My fellowship has cometh. In the early morning light you see a gathering of warriors and soldiers of magicians and witches. What's going on? My comrades in arms, my sisters and brothers. We are all going to Fontainebleau for three days, for three moons. We will visit the forest of Brérune, the birthplace of Throgral the Rash. Your passenger is rummaging through his armor. I know, I put my wallet in here somewhere. He digs around for a minute. Pinches a finger. Damn it! And eventually pulls out money for the fare. <laughs> you watch as he tries to remove himself from the cab. Fig first himself, bodily helmet down so as not to damage the roof. Next his sword with a clattering on the pavement and lastly his shield with no longer seems to be fit which no longer seems to fit through the door. Good day, my dear fellow, fare thee well. The knight salutes you. You watch him as he joins a group of friends. There are cries of admiration all around. You recognize your passenger with the rabbit ears. <laughs> he and the knight greet each other, compliments flying thick and fast. You turn the key in the ignition. Oh! Wait, I thought he was going to Belgium. What happened to that? You unfortunately learned what trichiasis is. Yeah, I did. But I wouldn't want to know it from anyone else in Jerome. I like him. He's so funny. In a weird way. In a bizarre way, he is funny. Maybe he's not meant to be funny. Maybe I just see him as a funny character, but... I don't know, he's one of the best characters in this game for me. He's one of my favorites now. The millionaire was nice too. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I 
I don't remember. There is no possibility to remember Miriam, okay? But that makes sense. Miriam told you about the freaky boy she sits for. Yeah, we haven't heard that so far. And you told her about your brother. I do regret that I haven't told her to, to talk to the parents. You notice a crushed cigarette butt on the ground. Yeah, it's one of yours, but it's been smashed with a thick shoe. You pick it up, look at it, and put it back in the ashtray. Files on a table, evidence on the wall. Yes, yeah, someone's been here. The killer? The Sandman. What? It had to be him. Actually, there's no way. It could have been anyone else. You take a deep breath. You must be dreaming. You're going crazy. You can't think straight anymore. If you're not careful, you're going to become completely paranoid. So you decide to ignore your hunch. After all, maybe you're the one who stepped on a cigarette before leaving last night. You take a few minutes to update your board. Steps in the hallway, they stop in front of your door, then move away. You glance at your bed and get to work. Okay. Heard at a gas station that the killer is taller than 180, but the case file says he's taller than... 175. There's nothing to read, so let's just end the night. That was scary, but I really don't think that the Sandman was in our... Maybe we really just imagined it. Or will we die in the last chapter now? Who knows? But we are going to tackle the sixth day in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.